What I would have done is lay that one first, really, yes. and go on that way. Staff at Colchester Institute have used a range of technological solutions to engage practical-minded students in theory-based lessons. It was difficult to control a class sometimes when you're having to stand up there and talk to them for half an hour about anything involved with bricklaying theory. So it all started off um, thinking on them sort of lines, how can I make brickwork theory uh, more interesting and more active in the classroom? With approximately 30% of the bricklaying course theory based, Chris Holland realised he needed to come up with a different approach. I can actually go to my menu and transform that corner and mirror it for that side. So if I'm building one side of a house or a wall or anything, I can mirror it in any axis I like. He developed a virtual bricklaying programme that transferred many of the practical approaches from the workroom into the computer suite. That's it. That's easy just to use the arrows. When the students use the virtual bricklaying resource, I find they're really engaged with it, especially when we're doing things such as bonding and demonstrating different types of brickwork methods. Beforehand, we would be using paper, and there's lots of mistakes made, lots of rubbing out of lines, and you end up with a drawing which really doesn't mean anything. You can't actually get any information from it. It's no good for revision material. When they get a chance to sit in front of a computer and do work, they're much happier. No, I don't really like doing all the paperwork, but I'd rather just lay bricks, sort of thing. It's, just, it's a lot better than paperwork, sort of thing. Well, this is more fun. You don't really have to draw, it's more fun, because you're on the computer, obviously. It's a bit of technology to use, easy for the youngsters. You show this to a customer, they'll be like, oh, God, bloody hell, this is pucker, this is. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, though, if you show like, a scrappy drawing, you show this all set out, got all your like, perfect bricks, all perfect bonds, straight joints, yeah, they'll be well impressed. Like that. Chris's virtual bricklaying activity fitted perfectly with the college's focus on technology-enhanced learning. We were looking at learning as an activity, as being interactive, as opposed to um, students being the recipient of content. This led to the, the whole development of the transformational learning within the college, with transformation being either a step change within a classroom or the change of a whole student identity. Senior managers at the college quickly saw the potential of Chris's new approach and through a range of events helped disseminate his practice to others. We've set up a number of, of what we think of as viral learning situations. Not great big long conferences, but little short chances for staff to, to meet up and incubate ideas. Chris showed other staff from across different curriculum areas what it was about and there was just so many different ideas being generated from this. I thought this is really good. And I think there's lo loads of possibilities for other departments to perhaps do the same. For instance, motor vehicle students, this again picture off the internet of engine parts. You know, it gave people a few ideas, <laughs> you know, I'm a bricklayer, and if I could do it, I think, you know, most people can grasp it and try and use it in their lessons to make their lessons easier. It's seeing one person's enthusiasm and allowing it to light up the activity of the others and talking about it and thinking about it, because you can't have that conversation about how you're going to use something if you haven't been sitting there with your brain tick ticking, oh, yeah, yeah, I could do that. I've actually got two, two maps here. OK. Overlaying each other. Right. Same yeah. scale. And you're just bringing the other one forward, And I've just you? got an icon of a magnifying glass. Put some of that magic ink, as they call it, in there. Ah. Uh, it all together. Yeah, we could actually get rid of the front and then see the back. Teachers don't have a lot of time, so anything we kind of promote, we make sure that it's quick, it's easy and it works. If you pick the arrow up, that move that you just click and... Yeah, move it. You end up with... Uh, a teaching toolbox which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger with not the amount of effort that it used to take. Pick up any colour you like. Oh, that's um, so easy as well, isn't it? I'm enjoying sort of trying to, trying to help people out with it. I could, you know, I could quite easily do that all day. <laughs> Through these collaborative discussions, ideas have been shared and then developed by others. And I'm going to put one wire there. I'm going to drag another wire. I thought... There must be something I can do similar with my electricians. Instead of using lots of cable, and uh, which costs money and all that, is there something I can do virtually on the screen? So I started along the same sort of concept as Chris uh, has done. 
done a few searches and uh, hit the University of Colorado and found that this was absolutely the most ideal thing that I could use for my students. In real life, if I threw that switch, what would happen? Fire, smoke and brimstone. Hopefully it won't happen here. Oh yes it does, and the students can actually go away and use it any time at home, so they can help it when they're doing their homework, their revision, any time that they, well what is that, what was the answer to that problem? Uh, let's set up a little simulation and I, can, uh, and I can actually prove my calculations. And so it definitely aids the learning, definitely aids the learning. There's very definitely been a change in the preparedness of teaching staff to take risks and innovate, to try something different, and what these days have done is to cause staff to stop and talk about what they're doing.